It's a great honor for me to receive this prize today, a prize that has been awarded to eminent personalities before me. I thank you warm-heartedly, and I accept this prize with immense joy, but also with profound solemnity. With this choice, you are rewarding my long-standing commitment to the activities of transmitting and sharing philosophy and literature as vectors of emancipation. The events we have been witnessing lately and which are breaking our hearts can only attest to the urgency of actions such as the one that, the one that I have engaged in. Since the creation of the Rencontre Philosophique de Monaco in 2015, we have endeavored to support and maintain the desire for thought, dialogue, and exchanges. The Rendezvous Littéraire Rue Cambon, initiated with Chanel, were born of a sincere and profound desire to share my passion for literature, as well as to shine a light on its role in the emancipation of women an everyday combat that to this day is still necessary and vital. The flame of hope, as far away and as fragile as it may seem today, is kept alive by supporting dialogue and nurturing exchanges. More than anything, better than anything, philosophy and literature can help protect this flame of hope by combating dogmatism, fanaticism, the dark passions that inoculate the poison of enmity, intolerance, and hate. Philosophy is not only wisdom, but also, and moreover, the movement of love that tends towards wisdom. It is not an attempt to grasp a definitive truth, but rather an encounter with the other, where one steps outside of oneself. Philosophy cannot be a gratuitous mind game. It requires us to shape in our sense of analysis, to think rigorously, and to approach and think about phenomena from all possible angles. Neither is philosophy an implacable discourse on a reality available to only a select few scholars. The wisdom that can be attained by philosophy has no weight if it doesn't allow an encounter, if there is no movement of desire calling upon us, questioning our being in the world, and becoming an insatiable quest for comprehension of human reality. The particularly complex, violent, and torn apart world that we all know requires that we have at hand the means to reflect on what we are experiencing, to help steer us on the right course, to cast a light on our actions, orienting us towards justice and responsibility. Philosophy and literature cannot, and must not for this reason, be reserved for an elite. This is why the actions we have undertaken strive to invent new paths to make philosophy and literature shine throughout civil society, in schools, hospitals, businesses. This is why in the face of the terrifying flow of never-ending news, crisis, tragedies, and anathemas, we all find ourselves in vital need of what Anna Arendt called the oasis of thought. This is why we are all in dire need of the teachings of philosophers and the words of writers of their clairvoyance and critical analysis to help define things, to combat ready-made opinions, to break the physical and mental walls that rip us apart and kill. I spoke of the flame of hope. I see a glimmer of it right here at the Real Alcazar, where we are welcomed tonight. The palace built for the Emir Abdel al Rahman and completed by Charles Quint, is a magnificent example of the possibility of civilization fostering dialogue and is proof through the power of what Victor Hugo named a book of stones 
of how civilizations can enrich instead of destroy each other. In my final words tonight, I would like to evoke the unalienable hope of the philosopher Maria Zambrano, also considered as one of Spain's most important thinkers of the 20th century. For her, exile and war were experienced with every fiber of her being and deeply marked her thinking. She conceived philosophy as a transformative activity which could not be limited to a speculation, to a speculative occupation. From her standpoint, it is necessary to make room for other mod modalities of reason, for what she named the poetic reason. In her hybrid writing, philosophical thought bonds with the musicality of the poetic imagination. Undoing what has been fixed and re-establishing living links between all things to access the truths of the heart's intuition. Poetic reason does not shine light from the bright, from the blinding midday sun, but from the rising hue of dawn. Maria Zambrano denounced a new form of totalitarianism, the invasion of success, thriving on the void of hope and becoming the sole arbiter of all human things. We need the poetic reason in the face of this danger to maintain alive the alliance between philosophy and literature, between thought and emotion, to inspire us with a thought which does not shine through its pride or triumphalist accents but for its attention to all things fragile and delicate, that where it seems a promise could be held. Thank you.